In this video, we're going to be looking at a math instructional routine that is called Fraction Talks, who was, it was originated by a math educator out of Saskatchewan named Nat Banting. He curates a website called FractionTalks.com with lots of lesson ideas and lots of materials and resources for you to uh, implement this within your class. So what question pops into your head when you look at this image? How much of the square is shaded is a very common response to this question. But as an educator in BC, one of the things that we really want to be getting to is how do you know how much of the square is shaded? We want to look at the deeper reasoning of what's going on for students when they're looking at this problem. So in a fraction talk, uh, there's a few different pieces of the routine that we're going to, to look at. Number one, we want to show the fraction to the whole group. Then we want to give them some independent think time using a pen and paper. Then we're going to let the students pair and think together and then share to the whole group. So to start off, we're going to take a look again at this first fraction talk image. And what is the what fraction of the square is shaded and how do you know? So taking a little bit of time, maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out how this is, what part of this fraction is, is shaded. If the answer comes to you quite quickly, one of the things that I would challenge you or the students that we're giving these fraction talks to is to come up with an alternate way to see that same fraction. What's another way that we could show our reasoning to figure out how much of this share is, is, is shaded? So as students are thinking, we move them into the next stage of this routine, which is going to be the, the pairing with another student. And this process of them talking together should be generative. They should be taking their two ideas, coming up with a new idea, or trying to justify why their thinking is the way that it is. As these students are talking to each other, uh, what we have to be doing is we should be monitoring and providing some questioning and prompting for the students as we move around the, cl uh, around the classroom. So as we see what students are doing, we also want to be identifying uh, work that we want to share and inviting some students to be sharing those work. This is a great strategy to be able to get some students that maybe don't have the confidence to normally share in class to be able to say, yeah, what I'm going to say is worthwhile and I can share it with the rest of the class because we know that it's, it's going to be a valuable contribution to the class. So identify who we want to share and ask them if they will be willing to share the good work that they're doing. The next part of this is when we get them back together and we are, um, and we're sharing those, the, the, the strategies that we've identified, we want to be annotating the, stu the student's work. We can either be doing that for the students and trying to clarify their thinking, or we can get the students to do the annotating themselves. This regardless is called dual coding, and this is a great way to activate a few different parts of the brain to get the students to be thinking a little bit deeper and to process the inf information in a different way. So what do we think that students would do? And so when we are first proposing or coming up with the idea that we want to pose for the students, we should be also anticipating what the students will do. But those students are always going to surprise us with some neat strategies about how they're getting across their reasoning or what their reasoning could be. So uh, just as a, as, a, um, as a thought or as a um, strategy that a student might do is they might go and they might partition the whole square is what they might do to make equal sized pieces which mirrors what they should have been learning about fractions as they've gone through school. So we have all of these squares partitioned and now they can you know, count up and make uh, a fraction. They also might start moving squares around to help them you know, visualize what the, um, 
what the fraction is that's being represented is. So they might take this square right here and they might move it. They might physically move it to here or another place so that they can see that, yeah, this is actually three of the 16 pieces. Okay, so they might take and they might represent their work in different ways just so that you can kind of see the visual process that they're going through. So here is another fraction for you to take a look at, look at this fraction talk. Um, again, we really want to focus on how do you know what fraction of this square is shaded. And that's always what we want to drive home with the students. So I would challenge you to take a moment or two and pause the video, come up with strategy, and see what, uh, what works for you. What is a way that you can solve for this uh, shaded portion of this of this square and how can you show that thinking? Once you've figured uh, this out, then we'll move, then unpause and we'll take a look at some student work. So what you can see here is if some few examples of students work that Nat Banting had shared in one of his presentations. There are some great strategies and some very unique ones. You never know what the students are gonna show you and what they're gonna come up with their strategies to solve. So what are the big takeaways from this routine? Why, are, why do we really wanna be using this routine? Well, it's accessible, it's inclusive, it engages our students and it allows them to chat with each other, to build those communication skills. They solve using multiple strategies, they focus on the process, they utilize creative thinking skills and develop spatial awareness. This is just a start of the things that are happening when we're starting to use routines like this one. So all the resources that I used today or that I looked at can be found on NLPS, NLPS Learns. And you can go to Numeracy, our planning resources, and that's underneath Instructional Routines. And it's just a tab that you'll find on the left-hand side of the page, which is Instructional Routines. You'll see that there are numerous different instructional routines for you to take a look at as well.